All right, it's a new day of Buick wrenching here, and uh, we're going to take off the fuel pump, and it's a vacuum pump combination unit is uh, what it is. Um, just to recap, uh, the clearly the car stopped delivering fuel, uh, no longer pumping it through to the clear fuel filter there. And uh, it was running and, and running correctly, and I have filled it up with more gas just to make sure I didn't do something like, you know, fail to fill the car with gas. There are some basics that you have to follow along with. Uh, and I don't believe we have any massive uh, leak between uh, the fuel tank and the pump. So quite possibly the fuel pump has failed, uh, and I have a kind of a rebuild kit that you can buy for them. Uh, it's a top and bottom, so it will replace the vacuum diaphragm and will replace the fuel diaphragm on the pump as well. And uh, hopefully uh, see something that uh, will confirm that we've had a failure of the fuel pump. Uh, so let me know that I'm actually in the right, on the right path to repair. So to remove it, we got uh, two upper lines. You can kind of See them right here, they'll have to disconnect uh, that guy right there and the other one on the other side. And then down below, a little harder to get to, there's a fuel connection down there. Uh, it's a little dark, but uh, you can see there is another one on the other side. And if you peek down, it doesn't show up very well at all because it's uh, pretty grimy. Uh, there should be, that's it. I just can't quite see it. That right there is another bolt. Uh, holding the whole fuel pump and vacuum pump on it has a paired bolt on the other side of it and uh, the kit I even got a, a new gasket just to connect between the the entire pump assembly and the body so we'll just take everything off put on new gaskets all the way around and uh, hopefully have a successful rebuild of the fuel and vacuum pump on the car so the first thing to do let's get those uh, air and uh, fuel lines disconnected all right, so um, with actually a lot more effort than what I wanted to, by far the hardest job on here was actually getting the lines disconnected, mostly because this battery box and battery is in the way. I really didn't want to have to take the battery out to do this, so I kind of wound up doing little bitty uh, short wrench turns just to get that. Actually, that was the guy that was the worst right there, one of them, that little, that little fuel line right there. Not much room to work with. You can do it topside. I think you almost have to do it topside because there's too much uh, frame in the way. Uh, right here is a little shoe uh, arm that sticks out. Uh, and fortunately, uh, the two bolts came out pretty easily. There's uh, one of the bolt holes right there that uh, you use to mount it to the frame or the engine block. And there's the two corresponding bolt holes right there. Not too big of a deal. Um, there is a gasket actually still on here too. Uh, so yeah, it, I, I was really dreading those bolt holes for a moment there because it looked like uh, there wasn't going to be much room to get in there. But with an extension, you have just enough, just enough to um, get past the body of this uh, fuel vacuum pump and you can get it out pretty easy. So let's put it on the bench here now that it's out and let's start uh, taking a closer look at it. So now we can see the whole pump here in a little better light and I'm going through the manual to take a few notes about it um, it's very specific it's saying that you should remove the top one the diaphragm uh, or the vacuum pump uh, and disassemble that first before you would disassemble the uh, fuel pump uh, lower diaphragm and then another point they make is uh, it'll probably be evident later but you should remove the, it says the rocker arm and uh, mechanism before you try to uh, assemble the probably one of the main plunge rods going up and down. It speaks to um, that you can't tilt that rod or do things or you might damage one of your seals. So we'll have to sort that out once I'm inside the uh, pump and diaphragm uh, disassembly a little bit more. But uh, top parts first then the fuel and uh, disconnect the rod. I don't know if it requires removing the fuel pump arm rod or if it just means disconnect it. Uh, something else that I was curious about it is it talks about uh, removing a couple of opposite screws first, putting substituting them with longer um, thread 
screws, taking all the others out, and then slowly backing off the other two because there's a pretty strong spring uh, at work inside of here, apparently. And uh, this will help keep it from shooting off, I guess, and you'll have a lot more control over the disassembly as you slowly back off those uh, longer threaded screws. So let's get started. So the manual says to do it, and I think it's a good idea. I went ahead and put a, a couple of file marks here, one here, one up here, so that uh, you'll know you have the right orientation of things when you go to reassemble it. I'm uh, sure that if I put paint or marker or something, I'd wind up getting gas on it somehow and wiping it away. So there you go. Okay, so all the uh, top screws here are removed, and we only have the one and the other one on the other side screw holding it on. So I'll start to back these off and see if the uh, uh, top comes off as an assembly. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that is. I did have to remove uh, one of the fittings here because it just was uh, it was in the way. I couldn't get this uh, screw head off with this uh, fitting sticking out. And by slowly releasing it, you can see it's starting to separate a little bit right here. So I'll just keep going with this and hopefully it just comes off nice and easy. And here, mostly for my reference, of course, is <laughs> so when I get confused later on about how this all goes back together. I've got a spring, I've got a cup, I've got a diaphragm, yeah, that spring, a cup, diaphragm, corresponding cup, looks like on the other side, they make a sandwich. Uh, and I can see the open part of the cup is facing up, and open part of the cup is down here. And we're almost completely uh, off here, so I'll go ahead and uh, finish this uh, top removal. I don't know how well this will come off on video one-handed, but um, as you can you know, start to take this apart, I can see there's a spring, which does not really have an up or down direction to it. It's, it is just spring. Um, on the inside, looking very, very clean. That's remarkable. I wonder if this has been a replacement pump or a new pump or something like that. Uh, here's the top part. That screw right there has clearly been taken apart and put back on with some fervor and tightness, but um, I've watched other videos. These are probably um, uh, components to the one-way directional uh, flow of air um, through, the, through the air pump. These parts are on here. They look pretty securely, and I don't see any other loose parts. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put that back down for a moment. And then let's take a look at the other parts here to the top. Maybe I can take this apart kind of controlled wise. Yeah, another spring down below. just came off. I heard something fall there though, so I think I'm going to go stop right here and see if I can find which part may have just popped out. Another disassembly note, the, uh, that is a cup that's underneath the spring that we just removed, and it does come off. So I'll have to remember to make sure that gets put back on there when I'm done with this. Into the parts bag it goes. And on the back side, this is a um, kind of a unit right here. Spring is intact. And that square hole there um, is where on the pump here, I'll see if I can show this. It'll be hard to shoot, but there's uh, teeth or feet that stick out there. Um, I can, make him, I can tilt this around where you can see it. That's what the sound that I heard. I thought it was a part that might have just fallen loose. There's a, one of the feet right there. Uh, see how it just kind of jiggles back and forth? There's a corresponding one. I can lift it up and show it in there. Uh, the two of those together have to go through that square opening to grab onto the diaphragm. So let me pull the other one forward. Hold on. Okay, there they are both, those two 
feet sticking up right there that have to together go through that square opening. Pardon the camera work. Through that square opening. I don't know. This may be what they're referring to, possibly um, maybe on the fuel side, maybe even on the top side, talking about uh, trying to not damage an oil seal by tilting the diaphragm when you go to put it back in there. And um, I may have to pull this foot out and, and so that those uh, two dogs, those two dogs right there can actually just push in straight from the side. So I'll see how, what a challenge it is to try to get this uh, foot and assembly to come out. So now that we've got the uh, vacuum side completely removed, I've just put all those parts in a separate bag and we'll start here with the fuel side. Uh, I should say up here, this is a, the whole unit's you know, like this. And I've turned it upside down now and fuel is on the bottom and we'll start removing these uh, screws here. So we have something kind of similar on the other side, although things are a little bit inverted. Here, the spring is not on the top. There is no spring separating this component. You know, this is, we're all inverted now, so this is the bottom. Um, I just kind of uh, undid the screws all the way around and it just, it did push off. I probably could have put the, you know, done the two screw thing and slowly back it off, but uh, it came off fairly easy. And so, now that I'm here looking at it, we do have some suspicious looking crud, like that. I don't know what um, gasket material this is or where that might have come from. I don't know if it's from inside here or where that's at. There's a little bit more of this uh, strange material right here. So maybe we have had a seal fail somewhere, uh, but we'll keep going along with the uh, disassembly here and uh, see if we can find exactly what broke. So while I'm here working on the underside, I will go ahead and finish up cleaning up. I've got a very soft pick here. It's not a sharp pick, kind of a blunt one. And I'm able to finally go around there, um, just like when we had done our uh, checkup on it before there. I had to do this upside down. I was trying to get to this surface um, when I first got the car there and couldn't hardly get to it. But now that I got the whole assembly off, I'm doing a proper job and able to clean this up all the way just by rubbing that old gasket material off. Again, this was uh, upside down like that before and very difficult to get to while it was on the car. But now I'll be able to uh, do a proper job of cleaning that up uh, 100% and getting rid of all that old cork. Okay, so I'm going to have to keep going with the fuel uh, lower half disassembly. Uh, this arm is going to have to come out, and uh, I am going to have to drift this pin out and, and do some further disassembly on it. Um, from the manual, you really need to kind of address and reassemble the fuel side of things first, uh, and then work on the um, vacuum or top side. I'll go ahead and show that uh, I got this kit here. It's a rebuild kit with uh, the upper and lower main diaphragm parts, uh, as well as uh, separately somewhere around here. Yeah, this one. Here's a bag with a lot of other internal parts here that I'll have to sort out. I don't have to work kind of methodically through this here because uh, you just get parts. Not every single piece is labeled, so it's just a kit for doing the entire thing. So we'll just start to work our way through slowly. So some parts of the kit might be considered a little bit duplicative from a couple of other gaskets that I got. I can see that right up here I've got um, kind of much skinnier, um, but they probably are completely adequate um, body gaskets, maybe two of them stuck together. Um, some additional cork here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure one of them is the exact size of the uh, fuel cover gasket, the other one is a little bit bigger. Uh, a replacement screen, a half screen, which I'm sure is not an accident, it's probably intentional. Two larger rubber grommets, a replacement spring, four little buttons, 
another smaller retaining spring or, or pressure spring. A bushing, which I'm assuming might go over this rod, we'll see. It's almost like a cup or an oil gasket seal. I don't know what that is, I'll have to sort that out. Two very small circlips, a couple more gasket materials. That's Two more there. This is almost like a little leather. Feels like leather. Could be a leather, could be a leather punch out. So anyway, that's what we will be working with here as I go to um, rebuild these parts. Well, as I was playing around with the assembly, um, I was actually able to unhook this diaphragm uh, from the feet that are directly down um, inside the fuel body itself. Um, they really, uh, for the assembly of this though, they really recommend putting this in straight without this arm in and then coming in sideways to hook it up correctly for fear of damaging probably that oil seal right there. That is probably the one that they are referring to. Um, my life has been made a little bit more complicated by the fact that, I don't know if you can see it, you see those three dots right there? Oops, I'll back up just a little bit. That is where, um, at the factory or what have you, the, the uh, arm and the retaining clips have been uh, riveted or, not, or dented in so that they cannot come out uh, without either filing that off, filing that off, gosh, good camera work, I'm looking over the camera, uh, without filing down and flattening off that uh, end, then you might be able to dig out and get that retaining clip out of there and drift that pin out. I also notice here in the top of the fuel side of things, kind of similar. See those uh, dots right there, those riveted, uh, you know, dented in areas? Those um, are retaining that oil seal in there. So if I want to remove that uh, and replace the oil seals, I will have to I will have to deal with uh, a little bit of metal work to try to get that out. So this may be a little complicated, but let's uh, go ahead and keep going. And again, for mostly for my own documentation and clarity, there is a spring coming off of there and a uh, bowl cap to this uh, fuel assembly side. So by drilling out on this pin end and taking out a little bit of metal on the other side, I was able to drift out, uh, gently put this, uh, gently put this whole device here in the vise, and was able to knock on that side to drive this pin out and release this uh, arm mechanism here. I did get a replacement pin with the kit, so I'm going to take this pin all the way out. There's also a replacement feral bushing right here and I'll take this guy out and uh, what do I do whenever I do the reassembly of it all here but that's what it looks like okay by using uh, this long skinny punch I was able to get alongside of little knocked in divot areas like that one right there and just give it a strike and knock it back in a little bit so that maybe I can get this uh, whole retaining ring out and then put a new bushing uh, oil seal in there. So with some screwdriver prying I was able to get the old oil seal and retainer out of the housing here and I'll put, well I have two of them that came with the kit. So I'm hoping there's supposed to be a reciprocal one on the top unit. I don't know if it actually got installed in the top unit because I didn't really see that in my on the vacuum side of things so I might be missing a part up there but anyway uh, at least one new uh, oil seal and retainer is going in the fuel side. So using a screwdriver I was able to pry out the old uh, retainer. This is a new one that's in here right now, but I was able to pry up and out on the old one, pop it out, um, get a new uh, oil seal and retainer in there, and then using a uh, socket similar to this one right here, I was able to go on there and just drive that uh, seal back down on there. And uh, that looks pretty good. 
I'm a little confused though. I did get two oil seals. There may be a duplicate on the top that I need to contemplate here. Um, I'll have to look at all the parts that came here and see if this still makes sense to me later on. But uh, anyway, for right now, I've got the oil seal, a new one, and a new retaining clip on there. And I even, for good measure, uh, use this punch to knock back and keep that retaining um, seal, the retainer over the oil seal in there by uh, bending it over just like I had it before when I got it. And now I'll probably go back to um, getting ready to put the diaphragm for here back on here um, and put the rocker arm assembly back in here and get that all assembled. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that old ferrule there with a with the new one before I get too far ahead of myself. Uh, I should note also that uh, I have a new spring over here uh, to replace the old spring on the fuel side of of everything and uh, you need to watch your orientation of your stuff here it's very easy to get flipped up upside down back and forth between putting these things together so I'll have to watch myself a little bit but uh, I'm, this is uh, the correct orientation um, with this uh, pump flipped upside down like it is mercifully I was able to um, just use the new ferrule which is in right now to just uh, kind of while this one was in here, use it to just push this one out and retain the orientation of all my parts and everything in here without much fuss, so that's great. I don't know if it was uh, meant to be this way or not, but uh, it, and it's hard to see. There is a crack. There, I think it's beginning to show up for you. If I, guys, if I pivot around on that old ferrule there, so uh, it was uh, due to be replaced. I was debating whether or not to do it. To be honest, when I was looking at the end of it, I thought that was intentional. I thought they just it was a split type ferrule uh, to be put in there, but in fact it's not. It just over time and age and wear had cracked, so it was uh, perhaps worthwhile to go ahead and take the extra step and knock down this pump all the way. Well, I won't sugarcoat it. That was kind of a pain. Um, this next step was getting that rocker arm back in there, shoving this entire diaphragm assembly through there, and then there's an arm, one arm that pivots down out of, there's three arms in there. Uh, one of those arms pushes through that little, there's the old, old one old diaphragm, one arm has to push through there. You have to kind of push this guy in and then rock it out and over and try to catch a hook, that one hook for it. That's the hard part because you can't see inside there very well. I wound up going inside and laying a flashlight on a table and running the light in directly through the um, back end of it here. Um, just to try to be able to see what was happening inside to finally get this hooked on to where it actually does what it's supposed to do. And I remember I have to turn this over. So this is the way it goes on the car and that foot pushes down. And when it does, it pumps on that diaphragm. That little spring has to be aligned right there. And at the same time, you're trying to drift to drive this pin through there when you think you've all got it and set, you know, push this pin all the way through. <laughs> so I wound up using this um, punch. It would have been probably better if it had been a slightly bigger punch to kind of get through and have everything loosely hooked up while I'm fiddling around trying to get this uh, diaphragm connected. And then start to retract this while driving the new new pin in. But I got it. It it was a pain. It was a pain. It was very fiddly. Now the uh, new pin is actually longer by a little bit and has notches cut in the side for those little C clips to lock it in. One there and one there. 
So anyway, that's installed, and now I can go on to uh, the next step, which is working on the uh, little valves, getting these new replacement valves in there, and I do believe that that's the key, getting, a, getting new valves in there. Um, I lost track of my filming, and I don't know if I said it before or not, but um, as soon as I had that pump off of there, I did the uh, kind of gross, but you do it anyway. You suck and blow on the fuel in there to see if you can blow all the way through. Um, from uh, one end to the other uh, You're supposed to be able to do that from one direction, but not the other and it didn't matter you go in, in either end uh, We just weren't sealing and uh, That seal I do believe is a matter of these little little one-way valve actions going on So hopefully this will get it when I get those replaced um, I'll have to sort this out too. These look different than the ones I'll be taking out and I'll show that to you in a minute but uh, hopefully that will work okay. Anyway, that was a hard job getting that back on and getting it hooked up. Hopefully the top uh, diaphragm isn't quite as hard. It shouldn't be because I don't have to do the uh, arm hookup with it. And this is one of the old ones that I just pulled out and it's pretty rusted. It's pretty crummy. No good. There's a little bit of washer left there. There's a little bit of uh, washer left in here. I'm going to take that out. And it uh, looks like you get some uh, new washers, perhaps, right there. Right there. <laughs> so now we have uh, more of an assembled unit. I went ahead and cleaned everything up here, cleaned up the uh, fuel bowl, used the new screen that came with the kit. There was a washer there that came to replace the old one down here, which was great because the old one was pretty ratty, pretty nasty. Um, looks much better now. I have uh, new valves and then they do the correct thing which is you could, uh, this is the fuel delivery side here so if you, I blow through on that end you heard that little toot, that little uh, buzz, that's uh, proper and if you try to suck air back through it no go, no, nothing. Uh, and the same way uh, on this end, you should only be able to suck um, fuel back. And you can. And a little bit of carburetor cleaner that I used. Uh, yuck. And then, or you, uh, but you shouldn't be able to go backwards. And uh, it kind of closed off there, so that's good. So. Spit that nastiness out. Anyway, the uh, we didn't have that before, and this seems proper now. So hopefully that was it. Hopefully that was uh, the problem, and now problem solved. So let's go back to um, reassembling the top vacuum half. So now I'm on the air pump side of things, the vacuum assist pump. And uh, when I took the bolt off, and I took the cap off, I noticed there was uh, there's actually a fair amount of oil inside there heavyweight oil, engine oil, so uh, I'll have to dwell on this for a little bit to see how I think that might be coming in there. Don't know if it's just blow extra oil being sucked through. Oh, one of the other lines here. I'll have to dwell on this for a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to clean it up, replace the valves, do the caskets, get it back ship shape. Okay, so now I've got uh, uh, new uh, replaced valves in the uh, vacuum side, or air pump side. Uh, there was no screen uh, before when I took it apart, so this kit came with a little screen that I'll go ahead and put back in place there when I reassemble all this here uh, with a new gasket. Um, and the screw just kind of keeps all that down. So let me get that assembled. Uh, over here, moving on to this side, um, here's the new diaphragm itself. It came with a new spring in the kit, uh, then two uh, metal washers. You can't see it. There's one under here, then probably this guy, which came with the kit. But to me, it looks like it's actually leather. I kind of like the uh, rubber one on the old one, so I kept it. And then I put the same washer back on top of here, and I don't know if it shows up or not. It's got little little keys cut out there so that you can put it down there and then spin it, and then it won't come back off. 
So that'll be the uh, uh, kind of the generic assembly here. And then we'll see if we can get it put back together with the um, diaphragm fork arms uh, grabbing on to that little guy. Hopefully it's not as bad as what the uh, pump side was. All right, here we have the reassembled unit with all the parts put back. Let's hope. I checked all my bags and my other stuff. I think we're ready to actually install on the car. And uh, there's the end of it. Uh, nothing more. <laughs> all we've done is get back to pumping gas through the filter there. No big deal. Uh, obviously, it's working. I've been checking out my fuel line connections down there and others. It seems like we're doing okay. I'm going to let it run up to temperature here for a little bit. Uh, I did get another uh, gas filter. I think the diameter of the inlets on there is just a little bit smaller, and I got one that's just a tiny bit bigger uh, uh, tubing diameter size on it. Maybe it'll help even pull more fuel through it. So, hooray. Uh, sounds right, too. I don't hear any clicking and clacking and anything bad happening. So, uh, let's call that a win for the day.